Hello grade 11s and grade 12s. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Newton's second law of motion. I'm going to be going over the definition, some important theory, important relationships that you need to know, especially if you're going to be doing a practical on Newton's law, which is usually the practical that the grade 11s do, but you need to know this for exam purposes as well, grade 11s and grade 12s. We'll also be looking at a basic calculation. It's so important for you to understand the basics in order for you to be able to do the more complex questions. Remember, I give teacher tips throughout my video. I am a matric teacher, I set metric exams, I mark metric exams, so I know exactly what to do to help you get the best marks you can in your physics exam. Let's jump right in. When you think of Newton's second law of motion, I want you to think of the formula F net equals mass times acceleration. So the net force that acts on an object is equal to the mass of that object multiplied by the acceleration of that object. It is very important for you to understand the different relationships that exist between these three variables in the above formula and you need to know how to apply this formula to various scenarios now in your exam guidelines so this is for grade 11s and grade 12s obviously you need to be able to apply newton's second law of motion to one object or two objects on a flat horizontal surface or an inclined plane or over a frictionless pulley and you need to be able to apply this formula with and without friction so in this video, I'm just going to be giving you a brief overview of what Newton's second law of motion is, understanding the relationships, and we'll do a basic calculation. And in videos to come, so you'll want to check out the playlist linked below, we'll be going over more specific examples of one and two objects in the scenarios that I mentioned. Let's go. So first of all, this is the official definition for Newton's second law of motion according to your exam guidelines for grade 11 and grade 12. Now, grade 11s and grade 12s, there are definitions out there that are similar to this, but not exactly the same. They leave out important words such as non-zero, that's important, and resultant or net force, that's important. And they sometimes even leave out the fact that the object will accelerate in the direction of the force at an acceleration directly proportional to the force and at an acceleration inversely proportional to the mass all parts of this definition are important if you want to get two out of two for your definition. If you leave out important words such as non-zero or important phrases or resultant or net force. So say, for example, you say when a force acts on an object, you can get zero for your definition because you have to say a non-zero and you have to say resultant or net force. And that's because if you take a look at the Newton second law represented in a formula or an equation over here, you can see that it's not force equals mass times acceleration, it's net force equals mass times acceleration. It's not just any old force, it's the net force acting on the object. So stating net or resultant in your definition is very important. And you have to say non-zero because if it was a zero force, then F net would equal zero and you know that that's Newton's first law of motion. So the words that are stated in this definition are not there randomly. All those phrases need to be there in order for you to get your marks. So when you study the definition, please study the correct definition as given by your exam guidelines. Um, a lot of videos that are out there on the internet do not emphasize the correct definitions. And I want you to get the correct marks. And as a teacher that marks and um, metric papers and sets up to a metric level, I know what definition you need to go for. And that's that one. So the definition says that when a net force acts on an object. So a non-zero net force acts on an object. The object will accelerate in the direction of the force. So if I have a object and a non-zero net force acts on the object, so say I push it and it's a non-zero net force acting to the left or to the right or whatever, that object will accelerate. So my calculator is accelerating in the direction of the force. So my force is to the left, the object is accelerating to the left. And the acceleration is directly proportional to the force. That means if I exert a big force, there will be a big acceleration. If I exert a small net force, there will be a small acceleration. And the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of the object, which means inversely proportional means that if one variable goes up, the other variable goes down. So if I have a big object, and I exert a net force on it of 10 newtons. It's gonna have a small acceleration. So big mass, small acceleration. Small object with the same net force, 10 newton to the right, 
big acceleration. Okay, that is very, very important. The relationships are very, very important. And what's also very important is to know that net force is measured in Newton. We've got mass must be measured in kilograms and accelerations in meters per second squared or meters per second per second. Please take note that meters per second like that is speed or velocity. If it's to the power of negative two, that is acceleration. And these are the relationships that I'm talking about. So acceleration is directly proportional to net force if the mass is constant. So if you take a look at this example over here, the net force is you see you're pulling with 100 newton to the right, 50 newton to the left. F net is 50 newton to the right. You can do a little calculation to work that out. And then if you have to work out acceleration, F net equals MA, you've got the net force, you've got the mass, you can work out acceleration. One meters per second per second to the right. If you do the same object, so 50 kilograms, 50 kilograms, but your net force is bigger, so in example number two, our net force is 100 newtons, right? So bigger net force, 50 newton to 100 newton. What do you expect to happen to the acceleration? Well, the net force doubled. So we expect the acceleration to double and it does double. Okay. And that is because net force and acceleration are directly proportional. So if the net force doubles, acceleration will double. If the net force is divided by three, acceleration will be divided by three. That is only true if the mass stays the same. And that symbol means directly proportional. Inversely proportional means that if one thing goes up, the other thing goes down. So if mass goes up, acceleration will go down and vice versa. So this is a basic example to illustrate this. In this example, mass is 50 kilograms and in this example mass is 10 times that it's 500 kilograms if you apply the same net force so in both cases f net is 50 newton to the right so the net force is the same for both of these which one will have a greater acceleration well the smaller the mass the bigger the acceleration the bigger the mass the smaller the acceleration if the net force is constant. And these relationships can be represented in a graph that looks like this. So acceleration is directly proportional to the net force. This is a graph illustrating direct proportion. It's a straight line through the origin. Acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. This is a graph illustrating inverse proportion. Please don't say indirect proportion. Your definition says inversely proportional. You need to refer to the relationship as inversely proportional. If you use indirect, you will be marked incorrectly in your formula and in your definition. So inversely proportional. And how we write an inversely proportional relationship is by saying one over. So if you had to read this out loud, you would say acceleration is inversely proportional to mass or acceleration is directly proportional to one over mass. So if you take the reciprocal of mass, if you put mass, if you say one over mass instead of mass, it turns the relationship from an inverse proportion relationship to a direct proportion relationship. So this is a basic example of how they will teach knowledge of Newton's second law in an exam question, in a multiple choice question. So they say the net force F is applied to an object of mass M causes an acceleration of A. So we know that the formula that relates those three variables is our equation for Newton's second law of motion. The net force is equal to mass times acceleration. When the net force acting on the same object, so mass is constant, same object, constant mass, they say that F net is doubled. So we're timesing this by two. What will happen to acceleration? So you need to remember your relationships and that is that acceleration is directly proportional to my net force. So if net force doubles, acceleration will also double. So that means that if I got two of my net force and mass is the same, acceleration will double. So 2A, so my answer is C. Can get more tricky than this, especially if you're comparing F net and, and mass or mass and acceleration, but just bear in mind that the third variable must always stay constant for the relationship to be true. So 
in our question our answer is c now that you know the definition of newton's second law and you understand the relationship between the three variables it's very important to know how to recognize that a question is a newton's second law question and not a newton's first law question i've done videos on newton's first law already so you can check out the link in the description box below for those videos but you will know that a question is a newton's second law question because they will say certain things or they will use certain keywords in the question that will basically point towards being a second law question they will say things such as the object is moving at an increasing velocity or speed or decreasing velocity or speed so you know the object is speeding up or slowing down or they'll say that the object is accelerating or they can even say that there's a net force acting on on the object and that is when you know that it's a newton's second law question obviously this is very different for newton's first law question where they say the object is stationary standing still um, constant speed constant velocity and then acceleration is zero so f net is zero but if it's a first, second law question you know to start off with f net equals ma that's always how we're going to start off our questions and with that being said, let's do a basic Newton's second law question. Now, grade 11s and grade 12s, you need to know the basics in order to do the more complicated things. So you might look at this and think, ma'am, that's too simple for me. Um, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to stop the video now. But please watch it. I have important teacher tips that I will be going through as I go through this question. And those teacher tips can be applied to more difficult questions. So you need to know the more, the more easy to know the more difficult. So let's jump right in. We've got a 50 kilogram object that is being pulled across surface with a force of 50 newton so that would be our applied force for example this would be f applied and then they say that there's a frictional force of 30 newton acting on the object as it's being pulled that's friction they give me the mass of the object is 50 kilograms that's also important now our first question says calculate the normal force the first thing that i want you to do if they don't even ask for it i want you to do this and that is draw a free body diagram for the question Drawing a free body diagram will help you with calculations such as the ones coming up. So this would be how my free body diagram looks. I do have a video where I go through drawing more complicated free body diagrams. That's also linked below. But if applied is 50 Newton, friction is 30 Newton. It's on a table. So there's a normal force being exerted by the surface. We are obviously assuming that it's on a table or a surface. They do say a surface. So there's a normal force. And then there's the force of gravity or F g the weight of the box you can call it w as well now remember the first question wants the normal force and the correct way to find the normal force i know that you probably know that if an object is on a flat surface horizontal surface the normal force is equal to the force of gravity that is true if the object is on a flat surface so not an incline and if there is no other horizontal or vertical force acting on the object okay but the correct way to do it is if we're looking for the normal force, the normal force acts in the perpendicular or the up down direction like this along the y axis. So the correct way to solve for the normal force is to use all the forces acting in the up down direction. And I hope you guys can understand that the box is being pulled along the surface like this. So pretend this is my box. It's being pulled along the surface like this. So it has a net force in the x direction. It doesn't have a net force in the y direction or the vertical direction or the perpendicular direction. So if net in the perpendicular direction, if net in the perpendicular direction or in the y direction or in the up down direction is zero, and which two forces act in the up down direction? If n and if g must give me zero, I'm going to pretend up is positive over here. That means if g is negative. How do you work out if g? It's mass times gravitational acceleration so because if g is going down it's going to be minus the mass is 50 gravitational acceleration is 9.8 that must give me zero if i take that over yes it's going to become positive so positive 50 times 9.8 so if n is 490 newton up take note how they say calculate the normal force they don't say the magnitude if they just say calculate the normal force, we know that force, forces are vectors. Vectors need direction, so you need a direction. This is the correct way, the proper, proper way to do it. You will need to do it this way, especially if there's an additional vertical force. You know, it's going to be very important to know how to do it this way. So that is how we get to our answer. Our next question, number two, 
wants us to calculate the coefficient of kinetic friction. That is this. And if you know your formula sheet, if you know your formulas, you will know that friction, kinetic friction, is equal to the coefficients of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. So we're looking for the coefficient. We just worked out the normal force, which was 490 Newton. And I know the frictional force. They gave it to me in the question. It's 30 Newton. So that's quite nice and easy. It's just straightforward substituting in. The coefficient is equal to 30 divided by 490. And I get 0, 0,06122. I'm going to round that off to two decimal places. And this is unit lists. There's no unit here. So there we go. That's my coefficient of kinetic friction. My next question wants the resultant force. Now, we already discussed when looking at our free body diagram that our resultant force in the perpendicular direction or in the y direction is zero, in the up down direction. But we know that there will be a net force in the x direction or in the parallel direction or in the horizontal direction. Now, which two forces affect the resultant or the net force in the parallel direction? Remember our free body diagram, it goes up, down. So we're not talking about th that direction because that's perpendicular direction. I'm talking about this direction. If applied is in my parallel direction or my y x direction, and so is friction. So if net is equal to F applied plus my friction, and you might be saying, whoa, 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 ma'am, why are we adding? Because clearly they're going in different directions. So you should subtract them. It's as simple as saying 50 minus 30, right? Yes, you're correct. But when you write your equation for me, so your equation of forces, you always start out with a plus because it is a vector sum or vector addition. You should start off with plus signs. Then when you substitute, that's when the minus signs come in. So I'm going to choose to the right as positive. So F applied is going to be a positive 50 because it's going to the right and friction is going to the left. So it's going to be a negative 30. So my net force in my x direction is going to be 20 Newton to the right. Again, you need a direction. Without a direction, you will not get your marks. Then they want the acceleration of the object. It's as easy as using our equation for Newton's second law of motion. If net is equal to ma, our net force is 20 Newton to the right, so it's going to be a positive. My mass is 50 kilograms. And then we're looking for acceleration. So acceleration will be 20 divided by 50, which you should know is 0, 0,4 meters per second per second or meters per second squared to the right. My net force direction is to the right, so my acceleration's direction is to the right. And that's how easy Newton's second law can be. Now, of course, as you know, there are a lot more complicated questions, like when I have a slope, when I have a a force acting at an angle when I have two objects connected. We have to do simultaneous questions. So I hope you stick around and I hope you subscribe for more physics videos because I will be doing a lot more of these. Check out the link in my description box below for more Newton's questions. I will see you in the next video. Bye everybody.